Hi there and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie Johnson with Green and Paint. If you follow me for some time on Instagram, you know that I love breathing new life into old vintage furniture. Well, I'm here to teach you how to do it yourself. In today's video, I'm going to break down the term scuff sanding for you. If you're new to the refinishing game or looking to take on a project of your own, you may have heard other refinishers talk about the importance of scuff sanding your piece. You may have thought, what the heck is that? How do I do it? Why do I need to do it? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you today. So if you're looking to learn something new about the process of flipping furniture, or maybe you just wanna get motivated to take on that piece that's been sitting in your house for a while, or maybe you just wanna feel a little less intimidated and empowered with the knowledge that you could do it when you're ready, then you're gonna wanna stick around. So if you're new here, I take vintage pieces of furniture just like these and I flip them into something beautiful. I have been able to furnish most of my home on a budget this way and now I'm contributing to our family's household income by flipping furniture on the side. Here in these videos, I take you step by step through the furniture refinishing process so you have the information and the knowledge to be able to do it on your own. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about scuff sanding. As you can see, I've got a great set of vintage nightstands behind me. They were gifted to me from a friend. I've already gone ahead and removed the hardware and I've also cleaned them up. Check out my video on cleaning your piece properly and all the steps that I take on every single piece I flip. Okay, so what the heck is scuff sanding? It's also a tongue twister. Scuff sanding is exactly that. You are scuffing up or making little tiny scratches on the finish of your piece in order for your paint to have something to adhere to. A lot of times you will hear refinishers say they're scuff sanding the piece to give it some tooth, something for your paint to grab onto. Scuff sanding always makes me think of when I was a kid and my mom would go out and buy us a whole new set of clothes for a holiday or something like that, including some shiny shoes. And she would always say, go outside and go scuff your shoes. So we would have fun. We would go and we would scuff up the bottom of our shoes so we wouldn't slip because the shininess and the factory finish on the bottom of our shoes was very smooth, similar to the pieces of furniture that you're gonna be working on. You can see a lot of these old vintage pieces have a finish on top. It might be a polyurethane, it might be a wax varnish, but you need to really scratch up that surface in order for your paint to have something to adhere to, to give it that tooth. Okay, so now you know what scuff sanding is and why we scuff sand our pieces when we're refinishing them. But let me walk you through the how we scuff sand, when we scuff sand, where we scuff sand, and all the other good information that you're gonna want to know when you're preparing your piece for paint. One of the nice things about scuff sanding is you really don't need any fancy equipment to do it. Things that I always keep in my scuff sanding arsenal are sheets of 120 and 220 grit sandpaper that I like to cut down into smaller strips. I always have a sanding sponge. It's a flexible sponge that allows you to bend the sandpaper and get into curves and some tight edge spaces. And then I also have my profile sanders or detail sander instruments. You can wrap a piece of sandpaper around that and really get into a lot of different tight areas. And then finally, I have a sanding block and that's what I wrap the sheets of sandpaper around. So you might be thinking, Katie, I'm ready for you to show me how to scuff sand my piece already. You know what scuff sanding is, why we scuff sand and the importance of it, as well as the tools that I like to use when I'm scuff sanding every single piece of mine. So to start, I always take remove the drawers from my piece because I like to separate them and focus on them individually. I scuff sand my drawers separately. I paint my drawers separately from the base. You can see I wrap my piece of sandpaper around my sanding block and then just really go to town. 
focusing on scratching up the piece's surface in order for the paint to be able to have something to adhere to. Remember that tooth that it wants to grab onto. Always be sure to wear the proper safety equipment whenever you are scuff sanding. You can see throughout the scuff sanding process on these nightstands, I wore my ventilator mask. So I didn't inhale all those particles of dust and the finish that were coming up. I didn't inhale those into my lungs. So you're not looking to remove the finish from your piece while you're scuff sanding. Don't be afraid, in some cases you will remove the finish, but that's okay. We're gonna prime the piece and get a uniform surface prior to painting. What you really wanna focus on is removing any places that have that luster, that sheen, that shine, that's gonna interact with your paint and not allow it to adhere. One of the areas that I always seem to have issues with my paint adhering to are in these little ridges right here along the shelves and the drawers. So one of my favorite things is this profile detail sander, which all you do is you wrap a piece of sandpaper around it, which you can see, and it gets right in there. Another thing that you can use is a putty knife or even a credit card doing the same thing. Wrapping your piece of sandpaper around and really getting it out. And you can see it's just taking, you're not trying to remove the finish completely. You're just trying to take that shine away because a lot of times your grease is gonna lay there even after degreasing or your varnish or your wax buildup, your furniture polish buildup, all those things. And that's gonna present some problems with your paint adhering to your piece. Okay, so as you can see, the entire set is, has now been scuff sanded down. And guess what? I did it using just one sheet of the 120 grit sandpaper. How good is that? There you have it guys. Another step in the furniture flipping process, scuff sanding. I hope you walk away today knowing the basics of scuff sanding, what it is, why we do it, why it's important in furniture refinishing and preparing your piece for paint, and also kind of how to do it. It's not that hard when to do it, where to do it on your piece, those are all the things that I'm hoping you walk away with today. If you found this video helpful and are walking away today with a little bit more knowledge to take on a refinishing project of your own, if you feel motivated to maybe take on a piece that's been sitting in your house because you know now the basic steps of scuff sanding, or maybe you just are less intimidated at the prospect of taking on a piece for when you're ready, then go ahead, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload new videos. Till next time. To see this set finished and all my great furniture flips, be sure to check me out on Instagram.